How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rallet, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some Pokemon rumors, leaks, news, everything in between, because there is some interesting stuff that's been happening on Twitter when it comes to the Pokemon company. So, if you guys are ready, let's get started. First things first is going to be this post right here. So, this was posted by none else than Pokemon themselves, and they made a tweet where they said, uh, well, just with just googly eye emojis, saying hashtag Pokemon Legends ZA, and then a picture of the mega symbol. Um, well, first of all, does this mean a much? No, it doesn't mean shit. It could mean nothing. But uh, again, we do know Megas are coming back because of this symbol. We already know that uh, Megas are returning in Legends EA. However, it is weird to see them tweeting this out. And I think a few other people also spoke about this exact thing, uh, like uh, talked about this particular tweet and how it's a little bit odd for them to be tweeting this already. Uh, normally, they take a bit more time in between their, uh, you know, kind of like promo cycles, right? So like, we don't even have actual gameplay of this game. And the fact that they're tweeting this and, you know, trying to get the hype up for Legends EA does give, like, credence and a little bit of credibility to the possibility that we could be getting ourselves a new trailer suit. And, like, because otherwise, what's the point of tweeting this? It doesn't benefit them in any way. There's no way to pre-order the game. There's no way to buy the game yet. Uh, there's nothing to be excited for. The game is coming out in 2025. The only reason this tweet should exist is if it in some way, shape, or form is supposed to be hinting at an upcoming trailer or something, or like at least trying to like jab us a little bit, be like, hey guys, remember? Remember Le Legends EA? We announced it a year, you know, a month ago. Ha ha ha, guys, you know? Like, that's the only way I can look at this and be like, okay, this is maybe what they're doing. But it's not really a lot. It's literally just a tweet, uh, which could mean F all. It could mean nothing, okay? It literally could mean nothing at all, which is totally fine. It doesn't, you know, end everything. But what I'm trying to say is this. It's a little bit odd. Uh, they don't usually tweet a lot of stuff. Uh, when they do tweet stuff, it's generally speaking, if we go to like the actual Pokemon account, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's usually just random stuff, like random garbage that doesn't really mean much. Like Galarian Ponita, for example, which brings back trauma to me because I'll, I'll just remember a 24-hour live stream when they revealed this thing. Uh, but if you scroll through... It's just a lot of promotions for, like, new releases at the Pokemon Center, right? Like, it's just the merch. Uh, it's, uh, you know, announcements for, like, the anime and stuff like that. It's, like, you know, there's not really a lot of value here. See, it's, like, just, again, plushies, so it's merch. Um, a whole, like, weird thing about Spigatito from the anime. Lico. Again, it's a lot of anime stuff right now because it's the only thing that's getting, you know, frequently updated every single week. Uh, but, again, see, Pokemon Center. So there's not really a lot here, uh, you know, that's happening in terms of the games or announcements or, like, kind of hints to the games, right? Um, here's, like, the closest thing I can find. This was an 18th of March, and it's uh, basically just um, Perrin taking a photo. So that's about it. That's literally it. That's like, and I think that's even more related to the actual parent picture here uh, of her trading card that's coming out. So my point is this. They don't tweet this unless there is some purpose behind it, right? There's got to be some level of logic behind it for them to actually tweet it. Um, and guess what? Yeah, I think that's what's going to be the case here. I'm hoping that this is a, a precursor to actual information. Like this is a way for them to be like, hey, guys. Uh, you remember Megas? Ooh, Megas, guys. Ooh, they're so fun. Ooh, you remember Legend ZA, which we announced a month ago? We still don't know what it even is. Well, maybe we're going to tell you. Who knows? Maybe we won't. My point is, I'm hoping this leads to something. Again, it could mean jackal. It could mean nothing. It could mean something, but we'll just have to wait and see. There was a second tweet, though, which uh, was shared to me by <laughs> Jay, who said um, they also tweeted this, and I automatically thought about this. Uh, so they tweeted out uh, basically this picture of a deerling saying, to prevent deerling from entering their fields, many farmers will have several lichen rocks stand guard as they're the natural enemy of deerling, which, uh, fair enough. Uh, and then he was thinking about, of course, Pokemon Black and... White with the field where the deerlings can be found, uh, which, uh, yeah, fair enough if you want to make that connection. Um, I don't know if we should really, like, be talking about Unova just yet. We're going to talk about Unova a little bit later in the video, but for now, we're going to leave it at here, okay? Just going to leave it at this point and move on to the next one. So, next up, we have some 4chan rumors. You guys know how this stuff goes. Uh, 4chan rumors, keep in mind, they are rumors for a reason, that there's always a chance that it could end up being, like, not real and fake and BS and all that kind of stuff. So, please, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but let's take a look at the actual, what do you call it? Like, the actual post here. So, we have two different posts. We have this one right here um, from this person who says, all 16 new megas in ZA, March 2024 leak. And we also have this other post uh, right here, which is uh, by a different person. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take a look at both of them and see what they have to say. Remember, just it is 4chan, okay? Just keep that in mind. 4chan. This can't be, can't be taken as like, you know, 100% confirmed or anything like that. It's just rumors, okay? Uh, now, let's get into the actual information. It says, all 16 new megas 
NZA, March 2024 leak. He says, source, my dad works at Nintendo. F off, please. And then he just includes a list of Pokemon. Now, of course, it is just a rumor. So, I, you know, and again, the guy literally says a, a literal joke in the beginning here. Uh, so I wouldn't take this one too seriously, but I thought it'd be fun to cover it anyways. Uh, he says, Tauros, Lapras, Jumpluff, Mercargo, Lucolo, Shiftry, Walrein, Staraptor, Luxray, Ambipom, Bronzong, Rotom, Chandelier, Mianxiao, Go Goat and Halucha. And that's pretty much where he goes with that. Now, does this mean we're actually going to get these 16 megas? I don't think so. Uh, again, the fact that he starts it off like this just gives me the feeling that eh, I don't think I should trust this guy. Uh, but the second rumor, though, is a little bit more interesting. So this post was made um, a few days ago. About three days ago, and it says, Pokemon Legends EA leaks by Anonymous. Hi, English is not my native language, or is it? Insert Vsauce theme. Uh, because, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of these are just getting more meme and meme the more time goes. But either way, he says, anyways, PLZA has nothing to do with redevelopment or development of Lumio City. I'm kind of surprised they, that nearly everyone took it that way. Now, in the trailer, the urban redevelopment plan was to Pokemon Company Incorporated's way of letting us know that they are completely redeveloping the city of Lumios as we know it. Now... Honestly, this makes total sense to me. Now, I know we've been so hung up on the idea of like, hey guys, it's a redevelopment plan. It's based on this thing from history. Like, like, have we actually taken the minute to like think about it in the sense of what, like he says here, that it's not actually about a literal element of the gameplay or an element of the game. Rather, it's an excuse to explain why the game city, Lumio City, is not going to look like Lumio City from Pokemon X and Y. Like, that makes so much more sense to me, and that feels more like a Game Freak thing to do, right? Like, like give us something that makes us go in one direction, and then they're like, haha, turns out it's not that way, it's actually this way. Um, it makes total sense. Okay, that's pretty much what I'm gonna say about that. It, it makes total freaking sense. And he says here the following. He says that, um, it's a way of letting us know that they're re completely redeveloping the city of Lumios as we know it, and they're going to scale it up to realistic standards. Think of GTA-type games. Okay, actually, again, this is, again, the same thing I've said before. This makes total sense to me. Like, there are games, Cyberpunk, GTA, there's a lot of games that use a singular city as the one location you play in. Uh, Final Fantasy, okay? Like, it's, it's not that crazy. It's not like... It's not like an out-of-the-ordinary situation, right? It's not something that's, like, super unlikely to be done or something they wouldn't do. It's very much, like, a possibility. That's pretty much where I'm going to put that at. Now, he continues on and says um, the following, which is, the map will be massive, bigger than Kitakami or Blueberry Academy's Terrarium and Skull and Violet. But instead of being barren with few things to do, okay, there'll be buildings and people and Pokemon everywhere. Catching Pokemon this game will be really different compared to all previous titles. That's all I'm going to say. See, that is an interesting way of putting it. I wonder what that would even mean. What would that even entail, I wonder? Like, what would actually that entail? Like, what would, what would um, it being so different actually mean for a Pokemon game? Like, I don't know, man. But uh, let's see what he has to say about the rest of it, though, because, um, again, the most of the stuff so far sounds logical to me. Like, all this makes sense. Uh, the fact that it would be bigger than Kitakami and Blueberry Academy, if it's not, I would have a problem with it. Um, but it makes total sense that it would be, right? It just makes total sense that it would be bigger than, than just the DLC of, of Skull and Violet. Um, I'm expecting it to have some scale to it, right? Like, a singular city can have a lot of stuff in it. A singular city can be massive. You can do so much with it. Again, the Spider-Man games, you know, most recently. Same thing there. Massive cities. Massive, you know, amount of space to work with. Um, but again, if you can instead make a smaller space, right... A city that's not, like, ginormous, but smaller, but everything in it has purpose, it's better than open fields of jack shit. Like, I can go into Unity right now and make an open, massive, open, sprawling field, and I'd be like, hey, guys, you know, look, hey, I made a bigger, I made a bigger world than Pokemon. Oh, look at, look at the size of my map, boys. But it doesn't mean anything if there's no purpose behind it. If you just make massive fields of open space that has nothing to it, a la Legends Arceus, Scarlet, and Violet, uh, you know, if you do something like that, then there's no pu purpose in it. There's no reason for you to actually, you know, explore that space. There's nothing to do there. But if you make a smaller space, more consolidated, but everything in that space has a purpose, that's way better. That's way more, like, that's just a better game at that point. Like, that's just way more useful. But... I digress. Now, moving on to the next part here, he says the following. Now, the story emphasizes mature themes. Not too mature, it's Pokemon, bro. Of course, I mean, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't make any sense for them to go too much in that direction, but fair enough. He says, some things will cause unexpected mega evolutions. Now, this is something that I've seen a lot of rumors say, like that maybe what we're going to see in this game is like a mega Pokemon running rampant, similar to how we kind of saw like... Uh, Dynamax Pokemon running rampant in kind of the, the anime uh, Pokemon journeys, right? That, like a similar theme going on there with that. 
Um, but he says, major characters will lose their lives or get game-ended. Uh, the main villains uh, will seek revenge. Okay. Huh. For major characters like Downfall. Okay. We'll get the origins of Mega Evolution for the third time, but it will still be vague. Oh, my God. Ha. <sighs> See... I like it when Pokemon is vague about stuff, but sometimes a clear explanation would be nice. You know what I mean? A clear explanation would be nice once in a while. Um, and also, I prefer it when, like, games and stuff do more, like, show-don't-tell. Pokemon has the issue that every Pokemon game is oftentimes the main story is tell, don't show. That's how they usually do it. They tell you everything, right? They give you all the plot points. Whereas, you know, they could just show you things happening, show you certain elements, and let you kind of figure it out on your own. But they do do that with a lot of the, the stuff like this. Like, you know, Mega's not being fully explained, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they do do that a lot. So I'm cool with that, but I just wish they did that more with the main plot instead and not just these side elements. Um, but again, they do do that, so I'm not going to judge it too much. But nonetheless, it kind of uh, came to my mind because I was, what, I was just kind of looking into Black and White's story, and a lot of people actually were complaining about Black and White having... A little bit of a, like a story that, yeah, it's interesting or whatever, but everything's kind of blurted out to you. Just a bunch of exposition, nonstop, like, you know, like, oh no, I want Pokemon to be safe, ooh wee, or whatever. Like, yeah, my point is that it's just a lot of exposition, right? Uh, not a lot of subtlety. But moving on, they say, they will reveal the start of Pokemon and tease new Mega Evolutions the next next worlds. So when is the next worlds taking place? That is something I do not know off the top of my head. I don't even know, if, have they announced that? I don't even know if they've announced that. Actually, I genuinely don't know if they've announced that. So I'm going to look that up real quick. Uh, Pokemon Worlds 2024. I'm assuming that would be, let's see. So uh, the very best players will receive an award. No, no, no. They're going to be, okay. So it's in Honolulu, Hawaii, apparently. Um, that's when, that's where it's going to be at. But when is it actually taking place, though? Let's see. Just taking a look at what, like, it says right here. But there's no announcement date yet, I feel, as far as I can tell. I'm just, like, scrolling down to see if I can find. But no, no. Look at the current list. I can't find anything uh, in regards to when it's going to be taking place. I, again, I could be crazy here, um, but I don't think they've actually announced it. I don't think they've announced the actual date of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Date for Pokemon Worlds. Okay, August. All right, good. good. So basically, it takes place in August. That's when Worlds are taking place. And if you don't know what he means by Worlds, that's literally just the, uh, the Pokemon World Championship. Uh, and it's supposed to be taking place in August. You guys can't see it because of my camera. But yes, here it is. August 2024. Which, if you think about it, makes sense. Because August is also the same month every single year now for the last three years. When they've done Pokemon Presents. Like, if you look up Pokemon Presents um, list. Like, if you look up the actual list of Pokemon Presents. You'll see that they've only really, in the last three years, they've done two Presents per year. So, Pokemon Presents, right, are the announcements. The equivalent of a Nintendo Direct, right? And these things only happen... Twice a year, more, uh, uh, like in the, I guess, twice a year, most recently, right? In the most recent time, it's only been twice a year. So either way, here's what, what it looks like. If you scroll down, if you look at 2020, that was the last time that we had more than one Pokemon Presents in a single year, which is the fact that we had um, one in February, and then we had two, one in June, and a second one in June. Uh, and the second one was, of course, to announce um, Pokemon Unite. But then we didn't have anything for August. We only had, like, a little mini announcement during Worlds, I think. Uh, but if you actually look here, starting from 2021, you can literally see what happens. February, August. 2022, February, August. 2023, February, August. And 2024, February, and most likely... August, which would make me pissed off. I would hate that. I want to get more information now, but it looks like that might be the case, guys. As you can see, literally February and then August is always how they've done it. And guess what? Pokemon Worlds takes place in August. So it makes total sense that this would be actually how they do it. Like, again, it makes total sense and we'll see how it turns out. But again, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Uh, moving on, though. He says that they're going to be revealing Snivy, Torchic, and Blastoise. Surprise. Wait, why did he say Blastoise? Why would you say Snivy, Torchic, and Blastoise? Why not Squirtle, dude? Why not Squirtle? Why would you say Blastoise? <laughs> okay, so Snivy, Torchic, and Squirtle uh, apparently would be the actual starters, which actually sounds pretty cool to me. I like that. I like that combo. Uh, moving on. New forms uh, for Xerneas and Ivettel. Ooh, they will make uh, will make Xerneas more attack-focused and Ivettel, Ivettel more uh, defense and utility-focused. Both forms will have the same stats. Forms will be like Dialga Palkia, not Groudon Kyogre, not Mega Evolution like. New Zygarde form, but not for use, uh, like use like Eternamax, but with Mega. Ah, I hate that. Okay, so basically he's talking about like 
Think about Eternatus and how it has the Eterna Max form, which you literally can't use. It's just in the story, and it, you just encounter it once. Uh, he's saying that's going to be the same thing here. He says, also, a real pseudo-legendary floette. Eternal floette, like Blood Moon or Saluna. Ooh. Okay, that'd be a cool way to, like, do it. That'd be a cool, cool way to, like, to do it, bro. It's pretty, pretty lit, bro. Nick and lie, bro. Uh, either way, new forms for Xerneas and Evetal will make Xerneas more attack-focused. Right, okay, we read that. Uh, they will also announce they have no intentions of including Megas in the new Gen 9 competitive scene. Okay, hmm. Well, that makes sense, right? Because, like, Legends games aren't competitive to begin with. At least Arceus wasn't. Uh, and I guess after we get this game, whatever this game is, officially revealed, and it's out there, um, hmm... Okay, let's put it like this. I've read a lot of these, like, these, these, these threads, right? And, and usually, um, it makes no sense, like, if you really think about it, like, the, for Legends to change course and start being something it isn't. Legends is more focused, in my opinion, on, like, just the story and the gameplay rather than the other elements of Pokemon, which is the trading, the competitive, the, you know, that kind of stuff, which is why I think they're able to spend more time not focusing on balancing, not focusing on uh, the competitive scene and trying to make all these, like, elements work that don't really matter I like Legends for that reason. Like, I get it that VGC players are going to be pissed, but I'm sorry, you will have Generation 10 later. You can enjoy that. Like, okay, you'll have Gen 10. You have Gen 9 right now. Just enjoy it while you can, okay? You'll have Gen 10 eventually, and you can, you can enjoy that, you know, competitively when that comes out. But I think Legends games are meant more to be about the stories, more about the adventure, right? I think the adventure is the right way to put it. Legends games are about the adventure, and it makes total sense to me that they wouldn't include Megas in Gen 9 all of a sudden. That make make no sense. You would have to update Scarlet and Violet for that too, which doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so that makes total sense. By the way, he says, I don't know anything about Gen 5 or Gen 3 remakes. Gen 5 or 3 remakes? Why would we say 3 remakes? That makes no sense, but okay. Either way, he says, in any case, I've read so many fake 4chan threads here that, I'm that are focusing on the wrong things. Nice imagination, though. Sorry for sharing almost nothing. I'll be back when I'm sure about more things. At least uh, at least some new megas and story details. Okay. And then he also had a little bit of a original post here that he came up with saying, hi, original poster here. Just wanted to clarify, this is mostly a world's reveal leak, not a fully PLZA details leak. Uh, to that, I just added uh, the part about the story details that I have heard, and they may not be true at that part. Uh, and the part about legendaries, the rest is confirmed information. So yeah. That's pretty much what he's uh, saying. So there you go, lads. I would love to know what you guys think about this actual rumor because, again, it's one of the many things we're going to talk about today, but I just thought I would bring it up and mention it and see what you guys have in terms of your opinions because, honestly, I, I don't know. It's just a rumor. It could mean anything, but uh, we'll see what happens. Either way, also, guys, official Pokemon news. Yes, baby, let's go. Guys, we have full details. Uh, Skull and Violet mass outbreak event is taking place right now i think it started literally today uh it's going to be running until the 31st of march so literally until the end of the weekend and also then uh, hey guys it's almost april haha <laughs> it's gonna be a good time uh but basically pokemon scarlet and violet baby uh, pokemon mass outbreak event has begun it's going to run until march 31st at 2359 utc details are going to be added over the so yes you're going to be able to get all these baby pokemon in of course pokemon scarlet and violet they're going to be actually split up i think these first two pichu and uh, hapini are going to be in Regular Paldea, I think Lucario and Munchlax are in Kitakami, and then I think Magby and uh, I think uh, Elekid are both found in the Blueberry Academy. So that's where you can find these guys if you're going to be hunting for them. So there you go. Just a quick little update on that because it started today. So please go do this right now if you're going to get some easy shinies. It's a great way to get your hands on them. Uh, perfect event in case you haven't already done it. So definitely do it if you haven't. But either way, moving on to the next thing, which is going to be this post right here. Now, this post is, this is, this has started a whole, whole war on Twitter, okay? This has started a whole massive debate on Twitter and conflict and anger. But basically, Kayla Capsule, amazing YouTuber, definitely give her, give her a look on her channel, make some great theory videos, said that Pokemon Legends EA is confirmed to take place in the past, question mark. Now, the text has since been changed, but why? Maybe not to reveal this yet. And they have this picture, and I don't know where they got this from, where this picture was from, but apparently it showed the Pokemon Asia English channel, which is the uh, one of the many Pokemon channels that's run by uh, the Pokemon company, and there's the Asian English version of it, where basically it said the following stuff in the description. Again, allegedly. Don't actually take this as being real. I'm going to emphasize that right now. I think this is fake, but let's see what it actually says, though, which is obviously the first part. Pokemon Legends EA, an ambitious new entry to the Pokemon video game series, will launch on Nintendo Switch systems in 2025, saying a new adventure awaits within Lumio City. In a time before Mega Evolutions were discovered and where an urban redevelopment plan is underway to ship the city into a place that belongs to both people and Pokemon. 
that's what it says. And then she had a bit of a theory here saying, oh, also, by the way, the person who shared this was uh, Pokey, uh, Pokey and uh, Pokey Nexions, uh, who says um, that they were the ones who actually discovered this at her Discord. But apparently then she kind of tried to figure out like, oh, is it possible that the timeline could be, you know, set in this kind of like time frame? And uh, that's pretty much where she went with that. Again, I would recommend watching her video on it if you want to kind of have a general idea of these theories. Uh, but it basically expects a timeline 700 years before in time, Tower of Mastery build, uh, 1800, Tower of Mastery Abandoned, Z8, late 18, uh, 1880s, uh, first known Mega Evolution Lucario by Corinna's ancestor, who must be older than her grandfather and was not originally from Kalos. XY Sycamore says Mega Evolution is new at the time, which is interesting. Again, I would recommend checking out this full thing, uh, but even she says here, to be clear, not 100% sure the screenshot is real. Neither her or Paquette um, actually originated the photo. It's difficult to find 100% definitive evidence for it, and a lot of people have conflicting opinions on it, but uh, none else than our boy uh, Soul Silver came through and made a whole post about this, uh, talking about some stuff, saying, for example, he, uh, actually, he was like referencing this, but he says, uh, huge find. I'll still do a future PLZA setting post, but if true, it seems that Pokemon Legends EA is all but confirmed to be in the past. Now, that's not true again, because the post is not confirmed to be actually real. And using the Wayback Machine, uh, people were able to just check it, and it didn't say that. It didn't actually, uh, at no point did the description ever say set in the past. Like, it just, people couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, but he says uh, the following, though. He says, does this tell us the premise of the game? Question mark. Remember Rai from PLA and had a Lucario? True. And that a Lucario from another land was said to be the world's first mega evolution. Actually, kind of cool ID. Like, kind of a cool ID, right? If if Rai from, like, you know, who's basically based on... Um, I literally forget the man's name at this point. Um... Oh, God, I literally forget his name. You guys will correct me in the comments, but it doesn't matter. But it would be, it's weird that his ancestor would have the Lucario, which, of course, makes sense because he had a Lucario originally in, uh, you know, Sinnoh. Um, but it would be really funny if they literally took, like, this Lucario and were like, this is the Lucario, which first ever Mega evolved. And then they made a connection between him and Corinna uh, as him being, like, a grandfather or, like, connected to her in some way. I think it's a cool thing. I think it's a cool idea. But he says, um, the following, though, if PLZ PLA and PLZA are set around the same time, we will meet Rai in PLZA, and we will play through slash experience the first Mega Evolution ever with him. Hmm? Uh, this um, will just be near the beginning of PLZA story, I imagine. In PLA, Rai also said he and his Lucario would test their skills other places. And you guys can see right here, if we look at the actual post of what this man says, in literally the text here, uh, request 88. And if you go all the way down uh, to the bottom here, Jubilee Village, before battle, I take it, uh, I take it you're ready for battle. I'm ready. Now then, let's forego the small talk and proceed right to battle. That's our style. After being defeated, that was a wonderful battle. It seems we need to redo our training, Lucario. Thank you for the experience. I can tell you've met many Pokemon, and that's helped make you stronger. I think we'll test our skills in another place from now on. Let's meet again. So, yeah, it does feel... Like we're going to run into him again. And if you read the actual story from X and Y, long, long ago, a trainer came to this land accompanied by a Lucario. They found two strange stones. This is said to have led to the world's first mega evolution. A trainer and a Lucario. I mean, come on. It, 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 come on. Come on. It, it, it does fit really well, okay? It, it fits really well, okay? Like, credit where credit is due. These, I love I love this kind of stuff, okay? It's really funny when they do find this kind of thing. But again, it doesn't mean that it confirms the actual uh, thing about the trailer. Because again, this is definitely, I think, in my opinion, fake. If you want my opinion, I think it's fake. And that's mostly because people using the Wayback Machine have not been able to find the actual photo. So here, here you can see, uh, Central literally said, also just use the Wayback Machine C for yourself. And he says, many are saying that the original screenshot here is fake and edited. And it does seem that way when the Wayback Machine is used, even though I don't know what any of this means, lol. But yeah, the Wayback Machine is basically a website that kind of archives and indexes a bunch of uh, pages, right? Now, the way it indexes pages really depends on, like, it depends on has somebody, like, been, like, has somebody submitted it to be indexed? Has it uh, been linked enough times? Like, has this actual link of this exact trailer been linked enough times for the bots, you know, on, uh, you know, <laughs> Wayback Machine to actually pick it up? Like, have they had a reason to pick it up and add it to the, uh, like, the, you know, to the archive? Like, has there been a reason for it? Again, no ID. But either way, he says the following, which is, uh, this is why I said, if this is true in the original post. Either way, the Rye in the first Mega Evolution theory is still very plausible if Legends EA is set in the past, which is true. I still think out of this whole post, let's ignore this like whole thing about like it being set in the past just because of this one like one little uh, possibly fake screenshot. Because again, this is like the actual Wayback Machine. And you guys can see, at no point on the day it was posted and the day after, did it ever say that. Like there was no point where the, the description ever said that as far as we can tell. 
But the theory, though, about Lucario and the first Mega does make more sense. Like, Rai having this whole connection, it makes total sense. It's not that crazy. It's not that out of the realm of possibility. That's where I really want to leave that at. So, again, I'd love to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on this because it is a big post. And there's a lot of people that chimed in with their opinions and their thoughts. Um, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, I would just recommend... Kind of take this with a grain of salt. Um, so just keep that in mind. And guys, you guys can see here, Jordan literally said the screenshots claiming the PLCA took place in a time before Mega Evolution is edited. We can see that with the Wayback Machine that the video hasn't included the line since the day it was released. You guys can see 2020, like, uh, you know, 2024, uh, the 27th up here. I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but basically up here it says the actual date when this web, web page was indexed. And down here you can see that it never really said that before. So at no point did it actually say it. Another point that I forgot to bring up is the Pokemon company always capitalizes the term Mega Evolution. It wouldn't appear lowercase like it does in the fake video description. They also call them uh, forms Mega Evolve Pokemon. The term Mega Evolution only refers to the process, which is fair. So again, I would agree. I don't think this is a real post, but I digress. It is what it is. Moving on, though, we have some other stuff to talk about, which is uh, something more interesting to me, which is this right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Ash is back, baby. Yes, Ash is back, baby. Ash has returned. Now, this apparently is going to be a Korean-only movie based around Ash. Now, what is this all about? Well, basically, Pokemon Korea will be releasing a po Pocket Monsters Johto region story, the final chapter, in May. This is apparently the last 15 episodes of Johto, episodes 260 and 274, which were skipped in the Korean dub when it first aired. So this is the first time they'll air in Korea, which is interesting because, of course, we've probably already seen these, uh, but it's an interesting little thing because they're making like a movie out of it almost uh, to release in only Korea. I hope there's going to be a translation of sorts that will come out. I mean, I, I, I hope so. Uh, I'd love to watch it, actually, uh, because, yeah, you know, I, 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 miss my, I miss Ash, man. I miss Ash, bro, okay? It is what it is, man. I, you know, I stand, I stand Ash, okay? Um, but I think it's cool and also interesting that it's Johto. Now, of course, it makes sense because it's something they didn't have before, so it makes sense that they would do it like this. Uh, now, these aren't new episodes to the Japanese or English dub viewers, so you're not missing out on anything. Correction, it'll be shown in theaters, not aired on TV, so it'll probably just be the Silver League conference, and then there's the actual trailer release for it. So, uh, kind of a cool little thing. It's interesting that it's, 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 you know, it makes sense. It never aired there, so that's why they're doing it, but also... I think it's funny that it's Johto, because this is the 25-year anniversary of Johto this year, which I still don't know why they haven't done anything special this year for the 25-year anniversary. All they're going to do is we're going to get a... Like, us Johto fans, dude... Dude, yo, we're suffering, bro. We're suffering. All we're going to get is, like, a tweet when it's the actual, like, you know, release day of original, like, you know, Heart Gold and also Gold and Silver. And they're going to be like, guys, it's been 25 years since the release of Gold and Silver. That's all we're going to get, because they, they hate us, okay? Like, we all know it. Pokemon Company hates us. You guys know it already. They hate us. <laughs> Wait, anyway, let's move on to something a little bit different, um, which is going to be this post right here. And this is also from Soul, so let's see what he has to say here. Now, here he's talking about, uh, like, this massive theory thread that he used to have. Uh, you guys can look at this original one that he posted right here. We can actually, you know, we already read through this one before, but it was about, like, uh, you know, which kind of time period the game would take place in. So, going back to this post right here, it says, New potentially valid point towards Legends EA being set in the past. If it's set in the future, it'd be like a sequel to X and Y. But what about all the fans that have never played X and Y? Instead, it being set in the past does not necessarily require fans to know what happened in X and Y. A past setting gives Game Freak the freedom to tell an independent story, too, with just simple references to X and Y, like PLA and Diamond Pearl, Pearl Platinum. Now, this does bring up another valid question, though, which is, when will Gen 6 remakes happen now that PLA is coming? Hey, did he just read my tweet? And re did he just read my tweet and post the same thing? Because I swear, or did, or did, I don't know, bro, because I literally said this exact same thing the other day. Um... I literally said this exact same thing in a tweet where I was like, hey, yo, like, how will this work for, like, you know, yeah, I actually think, yeah, I literally, he must see my tweet and just thought, like, huh, you know, actually, it's kind of interesting. Because I literally said this as well. I had a thought, right? And I literally was thinking about this while, like, laying, laying in bed. And I was like, huh, it doesn't make any sense. But how are Legends EA going to affect an actual remake? Like, does that mean, like, future X and Y remakes would be delayed or never exist, right? Because remember, ZA now existing means that Gen 6 has already gotten attention way before the time that it's supposed to have a remake, which is a little bit odd, which made me wonder, okay, so like, how does, does, does Legends EA basically satisfy and, and, and complete uh, X and Y to such a level that they don't have to do an X and Y remake for, a, for like the next 20 years? Like, is that what it does? Like, I don't know. It's a very, it's a, it's a strange situation because previously I would have said like, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. But honestly, at this point, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. It's a really weird situation, but 
We'll see. I mean, maybe maybe the future is like this. Maybe because like maybe like the original like games that were all in like sprites and like you know the two D art. Maybe because those games were all made in like a two D art style, they had a reason to be remade. But since X and Y already exist in three D, and you can technically still play it. And it's like, you know, and maybe it doesn't need a revisit in the future. Maybe like future games aren't even going to be revisited in the same way because they already exist in a 3D format and stuff like that. And maybe they just don't want to redo it. Again, I don't know. It's just a theory, but let's just move on to the next thing, which is uh, going to be this post right here. Now, this is also a post from Soul. So shout out to Soul for making a lot of good theories. Uh, we, we, we stand Soul, okay? We stand Soul Silver Art. Uh, but he says, when I heard about an outsourced Black and White remake and then Legends EA was announced, I gave up hope on seeing the original Dragon in Black and White remake. Makes. But now that the Pokemon Works exists, so Pokemon Works, for those of you guys who do not know, is a brand new company. It's a literal brand new company that's officially confirmed to be a, a collaboration between the Pokemon company and Ilka. Like, they're working together to make a whole game, right? This is an actual confirmed thing. This is not like a speculative thing. So the Pokemon company and Ilka created a new company together, a subsidiary called Pokemon Works. This is supposed to be a company that's going to work together with company, the Pokemon company and Ilka to make Pokemon games or assist with Pokemon games. So here's what he says, though, which is the following. He says, now the Pokemon Works exists. It changes everything. Of course, we, we don't know what PW or Pokemon Works will be doing, but if they're working on their own Pokemon games, basically as Game Freak Team C3, because Pokemon, uh, sorry, Game Freak, the company who makes all the Pokemon mainline games, they have two groups, right? They have Team A and Team B. Uh, so he's saying like teams, you know, team C or team three. Uh, that means that the team outside of the core Game Freak teams has the freedom to create their own IDs and put new Pokemon in their games. Now, not necessarily, okay? Not necessarily, because remember, the Pokemon company is beholden to Game Freak creatures and Nintendo. And I think that Game Freak are the only ones allowed to actually create new Pokemon. Creatures are allowed to handle everything TCG related. Um, Nintendo handles distribution, publishing, that kind of stuff. But Game Freak handles everything to do with the mainline creation of new Pokemon. I don't think they're going to let that slip or slide away to anybody else. I don't think they're willing to give away that level of power to anyone else. Like, I just don't think that's the case. But either way, I digress. He says that, so if they worked on Black and White remakes, they could ask a designer from Game Freak to make the original Dragon and add it to their remake game. That is true, though. Dude, that's, that's the truth. That is actually, that makes way more sense because I just don't, I just doubt Game Freak would ever let anybody else take control of their stuff. I just don't think they would be willing to do that. Uh, but this, this makes more sense, though. Now, do I think the exact scenario will happen? Probably not because I think that the Black and White remakes are already close to complete and might not be done by a PW, but you never know. And this idea is only amazing news for future Pokemon games and remakes if they're made by uh, PW. Now, if PW turns out to be more than just uh, more than just more help, it's like Game Freak is passing the torch and raising up a new company mixed with Ilka that will eventually make their own mainline Pokemon games, which is a possibility. But I don't think Game Freak can want to give that fully away, though. Like it, it, it wouldn't make any sense for them to do that. Okay, it wouldn't make any sense for them to do 100% that because that would give them less power in a sense, and I don't think they want that. I don't think they would want to do that. So. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much it for the video, though, guys. If you did enjoy it, drop a like down below. Maybe, you know, just let me know what you guys think about all this. Let me know. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.